Blanco in his eighth career start. The 30-year-old makes magic on April Fool's Day. Congratulations to Renel Blanco. Nobody saw this coming except Renel. He felt it coming out of the bullpen, I would imagine. Executed beautifully, worked extremely well with Yiner Diaz. But after a four-game skid, Renel Blanco is the one that stops it in grand fashion with a no-no. There it was last night. Holy cow. What a way to win their first game of 2024. Congratulations to Joe Espada. Okay. And I want to thank Dusty Baker as well. Sure. Everything he did with Yiner Diaz. Yiner Diaz. He was, we, he, we have to thank him for yep. holding Yiner back. Now, this is something for all the pitchers, though. Maybe, maybe Yiner can call a good game. Okay. So maybe we can stop with the Maldonado. Dude called a no hitter last night. And. And and it was Renel of all people, Renel Blanco. But he he looked great this spring. He, he did. really did. I thought he had moments last year. Yeah. You know, it's a weird. He's a weird story. He he's an unusual, not a weird story. He's an unusual story. Renel Blanco right now is going to turn thirty one in August. Like he's going to be a thirty one year old. He's older than Fromber. He's older than everybody on your starting rotation, other than, and I think that includes, I believe, Lance McCullers. Uh, well, no, McCullers, he's probably around the same age. But Renel Blanco didn't even get to the majors until 2022. He didn't get to the majors until 2022 when he was 28 years old. So this is a this is an unusual situation to set up. But, you know, in some ways, it's a little bit like Mike Fires, where Mike Fires kind of came out of nowhere and threw a oh. no-hitter for the Astros, too. I know I hate saying Why the name. Why you got to put Mike Fires well, because, uh, after he threw a no-hitter for you? Because Mike Fires threw a no-hitter. Oh. Mike is, Fires threw one too, and it's like, too? I hope not, but we'll find out over the next few years. Oh my goodness! But Mike Fires threw one out of nowhere, you know. Like this guy's not going to go down in history as any kind of special pitcher, and he threw one. The Astros, do you know where they rank in on terms of all time no hitters? Where Did the Astros rank in all time no hitters? Yeah, where they were in major league uh, amongst major league teams. First, second. Second. Dodgers with 25, Astros with 17 now. Well, the Dodgers have been a lot, around a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sandy Koufax has five of them. But, um, yeah, you uh, had uh, – How many did Nolan have here, two? Or, or? Mm, Nolan had one here. He, he just, just the one, one against – yeah, just that one with the ground ball to Denny Walling over to – Can first. name all the no-hitters in Astros history. Oh, my God. Well, I think – Well, either Don the Wilson. six pitchers count – Yes. There's two of them. They got, they got two yeah, of them. Yeah, they have a World Series no hitter like that. Yeah. They have a regular, they have the There's Yankees, Yankees. no hitter. Yep. They have Mike Fires. They have Renell Blanco. They have Daryl Kyle. You have Justin Mike Verlander. Scott. Mike Scott. Um, that's seven, but Nolan. Nolan, eight. Uh, you have, but here recently you've had, you've had like six. Yeah, right. You've had six. We, there's a lot more. But recently. There's, I mean, there's a lot more no hitters. Verlander, Blanco. The Verlander Blanco, the 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 Astros six man. There's there's I gotta go through them all, but I didn't really 16. want you to do that. I yeah, just seventeen. Seeing, seeing if you would bite on that, but yeah, okay. I did. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, what a night! It was a great night at the park. First of all, okay, there, you know, there's a lot. You had of stuff. a good video. Where were you? I was I was there. I was at the game. I was there. De Del, did you see I, his? I got to run downstairs. And and take a nice video. You of took the, a video of yeah. the last out yeah. <laughs> right behind the nets, behind home plate. Yeah, it was uh, it was funny. I was standing next to Gene uh, Diaz. Who, mm -hmm. He didn't know who I was. He was. He, I was like, "Hey, Gino, what's up?" He was like, "Hey, media hey, relations director." Media relations director. I guess I haven't been there much lately. You know, you buy your tawdry comments. Right? Yeah, but that's about it, probably. But um, he, he uh, yeah, I got to run down there and take a nice video for you guys, and I sent it to you. I didn't put it on social media because I knew I'd, I'd get lit up. Oh, you ran down there? I ran down there. Yeah, they, they let me come down for just for that. Yeah, for <laughs> ran, that part. he ran down there. I ran down there. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. I ran down like John, So you For people so, who don't know, beyond the uh, fact that John will put up, um, like, you know, clips if he's at a sporting event. Sometimes he sometimes doesn't want to, doesn't want to despot it because he knows the, the flack he'll get. In the group chat, what he'll do is he'll go, look where I am, and it'll be a great view of something. Um, so, once again, a, tra a tradition unlike any other, John showing us how good his life is. Um, well, no, no, yes. that's not it. Lance, that's not it at all. Lance, I just want to share on. 
to share with you guys the experience that it was. Did I not send you the the, the final pitch of the no hitter, the celebration Scenic. that yeah, you the, wouldn't have gotten from that angle? Oh yeah, the, yeah, the bat, that bald guy's head that I got that view of. Thanks for that. <laughs> he should go to where should he go? Doc Linville. Thank you. You should have talked to him instead of Gene Diaz. Yeah. Talk to that guy in front of you. But it's his favorite pastime. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Being in a great spot, in a great view, yeah. in a great place, and tell, showing us what, where he is. Yeah. That's what he loves I'm to sure do. I'm sure whatever you're doing is fun, too. I, I, I was always watching the game there. at home having a grand old time. <laughs> I'm, put, I'm sure whatever you're doing is fun, too. Yeah. I'm, there's, um, yeah. So, no, so they get Vlad Guerrero. I saw it hilarious. Shive said, he's on Twitter, he said, F you, Vlad Guerrero, you're lazy ass halfway jogs on every other time, but now all of a sudden yeah, on the last, yeah, you're hauling ass down the line trying to break up the no-hitter. Uh, George was on deck. I was I was pretty close to him, and the guys were killing me because I would say, hey, George, let him have the no-hitter. And everybody around me was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, why did you say that out what, loud? Hey, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, he got the no-hitter. You know who you remind me of? Brian McTaggart. Brian McTaggart. Oh, he, right. he was flexing it. And today. Steve he Sparks. Was, he he kept was saying, look, look, it, look what happened. I didn't I didn't jinx one yeah, again. Yeah, you know what? It's so stupid. Like somebody in the crowd or up in the press box is going to change a no-hitter. Y'all are dumb. That's just dumb. Okay? And George gave me a little nod. Uh, and you know what George did? Walked. He he didn't he didn't put it in play and beat two him. walks. That's all. No hits. Two two. I mean, walks. if you missed it yesterday and you're you're smarting from the the sweep, or maybe you watched uh, Iowa LSU or whatever the case may have been, um, it was a no hitter. Renell Blanco had complete command yesterday. He had two walks, but he walked he walked George. I mean, he walked George to lead the game off. Wait, did George get both the walks? He got both the walks. Did George get both? No, no, no. He got the the yeah. He did get both. He got both the walks. So right, uh, no one else, him. no one else got a hit. Now you did have one, one ball kickoff Blanco's foot, and well, nice you had play. to have uh, Dubon make a nice play on it. They they brought Dubon in as a defensive replacement for Altuve, and uh, I don't know. Do you, I wonder if that would have, if Altuve gets to it, makes the same play. I think so, but I don't know. I mean, Dubon is a Gold Glove winner. So uh, yeah, from last year. So I don't know. Maybe that was one that that ended up uh, saving the no hitter. But Espada gets the W, his first one. Renel Blanco with the no hitter. If you guys want to weigh in, seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. I tell you what, the story is definitely Renel Blanco, but the offense. Wow, what an explosion! Uh, and one of the stories is Pena finally hitting a home run. It's it's. Do you do you know the date? His last home run. June. I don't know the the, the exact date. No. July fifth. July fifth. Oh, that's right. We went over it. Yeah. Yeah. July fifth. July 5th. Yeah. July. 5th. Last home run was July fifth. Holy crap! He had the apparently was it the second longest streak of an an everyday player that hadn't homered. Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah I, think, I don't know. I, I didn't know that one, but I mean. He's got an OPS of just under 1,200 right now. He made some changes to a swing, got you, some things you can worked thank out. Reggie Jackson. Thanks, Reggie Jackson. Although, I guess not hitting coaches, not Alex Centrone doesn't no. get any benefit. Why don't we, benefit? we relax? Because he actually talked about reworking a swing, and he did not mention Reggie Jackson. He, all right, let's hear Let's hear who he mentions. And while Reggie's sitting there th- he's going, hey, okay, a little something over here, you know, Reggie like, Jackson. And like I said, you put him. A- Oh, he sounds like you know in the spring, like I said, we put in a lot of work. Troy Snigger, uh, Centron, Rene Rojas, we we got to work, and it's just kind of keeping that throughout the whole season. You know, maintaining the routine, and then going from there. Not one mention of Mister October. Well, Niall sent me a picture with Reggie Jackson and 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 Jeremy Pena working it. Okay, maybe he just okay. Maybe that was what the key. But okay. If you don't want to credit uh, that guy, Mister Baseball, Mister October, so that's the hitting, fine. so the hitting coaches did get their their flowers. They Reggie, got their love. Reggie Good. Jackson, not so much. No, well, Reggie Jackson's got enough love in his life, right? I mean, do, do you does think he, he need more? Do you think? And no, he said he spoke otherwise. But do you think he was like secretly fist pumping when Juan Soto was throwing guys out? He was like, yes. <laughs> you think because uh, the Yankees? Yes. Just... Yeah, no, he was not. Mm. He's at all Astro okay. all the time. Okay. No, he ain't about that life. I feel like first Yankees five and zero start in like forever. 
And they're, you know what? It, it was much like last year. Remember last year? Uh-huh. The Yankees were, by, it, right before the All-Star break, uh, nobody can catch. And then they sucked. The Yankees and Dodgers were on a collision course. Yep. I was told that last yeah. year at that same no, no, time. No, no, like, this is an inevitable right. collision course. Yep. So, that, how about Yiner with 2-1? Holy two crap, did he kill that ball up over the, the railroad tracks, destroyed it. He's on, I'm telling you, he's going to be an All-Star Homer, which was this nice. year. Um. Abreu got a hit. Thank you. Abreu got a hit. Kyle Tucker, two home runs. Yep, Kyle Tucker. Tuck is Tuck is off to, you know, after a little bit of a slow start in a couple games, he's really starting to hit now. Yeah, he wasn't great against the Yankees, but he's okay. Yeah. He was, he was, uh, you know, he did. He came up with a hit that got thrown out of the plate, but, but he, and he makes, needs to make up for last uh, postseason, which was well, awful. Got 157 more games to go. That's all. And, um, you know, other than that, I mean, that's a big deal. Jake, you know, he had six homers. Jake, who got his second. You have two from Yiner. Yiner, Yiner is becoming, I'm telling you, he's an all-star this year, but Yiner is going to become, I think you're going to see Yiner become one of the most heralded catchers in Major League Baseball. And I don't want to hear about calling games. Right? We already know, you get the attention for your hitting. That's it. No one says, oh, just the, the pitch framing. That's that's not what anyone looks at when it comes to your national attention. Yiner is a big time hitting catcher. That's what he's going to be known for. I think the the pitch framing and all that stuff is going to come. The pitch calling is going to come. He's he's just you know getting into that. And the other thing is, you know, he's got an arm. He's got an arm to throw guys out. He absolutely does. At his, what point? His pop times faster, but man, is he a hitter? At what point do they in the off season? Do they put him at first base? I mean, I think it needs to happen at some point because you you could have a special Is that hitter. waste in his arm though. Uh, possibly, but <laughs> if you get a good like, it's the old. It's just the old adage: if you're a catcher who's a great hitter, you're you're gonna waste their you're gonna yeah. waste their their career with legs with damage to the knees. I mean, that's why Craig Biggio. For a lot of people, maybe are too young to know that Craig Biggio was drafted as a catcher, and they moved him out of there. A Biz didn't have the arm, but B, they wanted to really take care of his knees because they knew they had something special. Yep. And uh, it wouldn't shock me if something like that happened to Yonder Diaz where he became a full-time first baseman. In fact, that needs to happen. And and then there's Alex Bregman. And as I told you, he's going to be an MVP. Uh, he's just off to a bit of a slow start with three more strikeouts no, last night. Alex Bregman off to a slow start at the beginning of that's a season? That's never happened. Well, that's never, only the seventh year ever in a row. happened. 713 ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Someone 3780 The number, if you want to get in here, let's talk about that uh, the basketball last night. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, Whitey got a win finally. Whitey got the win. We will talk about it on the other side here on ESPN. Whitey 90- Bulger? Is White. this the show we're doing? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Not after Renell Blanco. Renell Blanco. Joe was a big, Espada. It was a big night for no, Whitey. Our not- Latin, our, our Latin players, Joe Espada, Yiner. I mean, Joe Espada, our manager, our Latin player, Renell Blanco, our Latin player, Yiner, Yiner Diaz. Joe. Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena. And now you're going to say Whitey, Whitey got Whitey wins? Got a win. Whitey got the wins. All right. That's what we'll do on the other side. But first, let's this talk about, terrible. you know, where you can win? MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. It's where you play, win, and get paid. That's right, baby. That's where you go to get your bet on. What is it that you would like to bet on? And they, Because they've got everything. It's just ridiculous how good it is, how easy it is. There's some sites that aren't nearly as easy to uh, navigate. This one is simple. It's very simple. And it's so if you're if you're a bit worried about going on and not sure how you how to do it, it's simple. It's self-explanatory. So you want to bet, win, get paid, you got that. You want bonus for putting your money in, you got that. Now, you ain't getting that with your local bookie. First of all, you ain't gonna get. He ain't giving you more money to play with. They're gonna give you fifty percent on top of whatever you deposit initially at mybookie.ag. But you gotta put in promo code bet nine seven five. It is the place to play, win, and get paid. You're gonna love the site. You're gonna love everything about it. You can play casino games with live dealers. All of that stuff going on right now. Mybookie.ag promo code bet nine seven five.
Did you have a little uh, a little sip last night after the no-no? I did with Maestro Dobell, the Cristalino. Smooth finish, as always. Listen, my, Maestro Dobell is made, is distilled in, in uh, Tequila, Mexico. It's an actual place, Tequila, Mexico. And what they do is they have had a process that they've used. It's really phenomenal uh, for for decades. This is a 11-generation company that has been doing it the right way the entire time. They fine-tuned the process, fine-tuned the distilling, and what they have is a tequila that is almost unmatched. It's truly amazing. And the best part is you can get it. This is a premium tequila. You can get at a very reasonable price wherever you find uh, fine liquors. They've got Reposado. They've got Añejo. They've got your Cristalino. So if you are looking for that special tequila and you are a big tequila drinker, this is a bottle you need to have on your shelf. It's Maestro Dobel. Wherever fine liquors are sold, it's Maestro Dobel. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Let me ask you a question. Would it be outrageous if the number one pick in the WNBA draft is Paige Beckers? Uh, uh, Outrageous? No. I don't think it'd be outrageous at all. I, there is a there's a case to be made that she's actually a better player than Caitlin. Well, I mean number the numbers, one, the, the star the numbers power say is, show it. The star power is insane. That's it. But but I mean she also as the all time assist leader, like with somebody who has the ball in her hands at all times, yeah. she's responsible for a crap ton of. Well, points. it would make it outrageous because she's already announced she's coming back. That Beckers is coming back. Yes. Oh, she is coming back. Okay. Yes. Um. So, Caitlin's already announced that she's coming out, right? Is she done? Yeah, I believe so. Angel didn't announce yesterday, did she? No, that she said that a decision she makes after her final game. She said that beforehand, but she didn't make that honestly, Angel's I'm making right. a ton of money. Yeah, I, honestly, I think now, – now, I think it – you know, I had a marketing director who he would know. He said, look, this, this money is going to follow them. It's not going to change unless there's a direct NIL deal – that they're doing that has regional influence, which at this level, you're not, you know, they're, they're beyond that. They're beyond the regional people. Um, but the point was, if you've got a big time company like an Adidas or a Nike or whatever, that doesn't matter if you're in college or WNBA, right. they're going to, because the college basketball has done such a great job of promoting them. But man, I got to think for a lot of them, this really, when you look at the WNBA, what they get paid now, they have elevated pay for, special players but i gotta think that it's a tough decision yeah no. i really do because the money like angel reese is gonna if you want to chase championships so jamal shed has a year left if he wants to take it he has a year left i think this should and supposedly the number's like a million for him to stay in but honestly if he can get anything near that i'm not sure i wouldn't stay in and chase championships i'm not sure where he gets drafted yeah right i don't know that he's gonna make an nba roster but with probably more than likely he does but He's not a great prospect for the NBA. He's not a because well, he look, doesn't he's not tall. All, shoot, yeah. He's not a shooter. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Pat Beverly type. Yep. But Pat Beverly was a better three point shooter than people probably give him credit yeah. for. Speaking of three point shooting, what do you think Caitlin Clark's? Do you guys know what he, what she shoots? I would From say from three on the season? Mid thirties? Yeah. Do you, for, for I mean, the she season. shoots a ton, yeah. She's probably about thirty six percent. She's twenty eight point nine. For the season? For the season. She has to get up a lot of shots for that team oh, to win games. Yeah. Wow. She puts up 12.7 per game and makes 3.7. She puts up 12.7. Be Becker's 42% three-point shooter. Hold on. She shoots 28% for the year? For the year. 20, well, she started 29%. taking some really yeah, she takes bad low. shots. Now she, well, not only bad. She takes NBA threes. I mean, she, but she ain't afraid of But what's her point? Well, it's I, not. They're I, not. Like, she was now, making them yesterday, but what's her point? What's the point in taking the longest shots you can? Uh, well, that's it's the only the, place the she's open. She, shot she gets yeah she as far as open gets. ones at least and and uh, yeah well I, it's it is it is weird Be beckers is probably a better player the numbers all show well, she's 52 percent from the field beckers while has Caitlin's better teammates. 43 yeah beckers does have better teammates much so better it'll be a quote-unquote easier for her to get looks you yeah. saw some of the things that were happening last night in that game because you'll see down the stretch where they're running come having her run off screens and uh get open looks the caitlin thing is she's the she's the luca of 
the um, of Iowa. I wouldn't call Beckers that because of how he, he little, heliocentric it is. She, she doesn't come off the floor. She everything runs through her. Even the stuff heliocentric. Work, that's what they call James and Luca. Those the players who all everything revolves around that particular player. He's, it's he's not in a system. He is a system. Exactly. She is the system. She at is Iowa. the system. So even the, the back cuts that they get that they were making layups off, that's all because of all the attention placed on her. So um, I imagine at the WNBA level, she will probably get better shots because she will be playing with better players. Now, what did she does too? Now, she does average 10 assists a game, yeah, she, which is way more I, than Becker's, but she also averages five and a half turnovers. John, she averages. She th- threw the, was throwing the ball around in the second quarter. I don't know where you got your state. She was 38% from three. I got it right here. Comparing like programs is, over the past six games. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, the last, okay. the, the postseason. The yeah, postseason. Okay, I was going to say. NCAA tournament. Because okay. she's a 38% shooter and, for yeah, her Yeah, career. right. Okay. Um, yeah, this is postseason. This is postseason. Um, but the true shooting performance, uh, true shooting is, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Be- Beckers is going to be. Here's the deal about the WNBA, though. You can't go out until after you're a senior. The WNBA won't draft you. You have to be. I'm pretty sure you have to be 21 so they, or 22 years old. So why is – oh, you have to be at a certain age. Yes. Because Beckers has had multiple season in, yes. injuries, so that's why she had a decision Well, Caitlin Clark is maybe four years removed from high school. She is. She's played four years ago. Caitlin Clark, because they don't want their, their sport, they can't afford to have it decimated, like, by early departures after one year and stuff. Um, and, and, yeah, and Caitlin Clark's played four years. Yeah, they – you know what? You do have to build up um, some – it, it's a, probably a pretty good rule. And you know what? It's helping their college basketball well, and a lot. She, and, and actually, we may not hear about this. They're asking if Caitlin Clark coming back. That's because she had a COVID year. Other than that, she wouldn't be coming back. Yeah. It's four. It's a four-year deal. It always has been a four-year deal. It's just COVID's really changed people's perception because you get a free year. <clears throat> but that's going to be over, I think, next year, potentially, unless it drifts into the 21 season, um, where – like Jamal Shedd's been here four years, tip, and he didn't take a redshirt year. You're usually done, but he's got a COVID year, so I'm really inter- I really think he needs to think about yeah. this. I, I really do. <laughs> Let's get St- Stafford in here before we uh, get to a break. Get back some more Astros. Um, did you watch LSU Iowa? You guys can comment on that as well as Astros stuff. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Stafford, what did you think of the game last night? Hey man, first things first. I don't want the uh, Ronell Blanco, the no hitter. I didn't see all of it because I was watching the game, but we, we got to fix from about this, man. They, they got to from about this is the key. So if we're gonna win the World Series, we got to fix him. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna David Donna. I'm not gonna take away from the no hitter and all that. That was that was great. We needed that win, but. Uh, my girl made me watch the LSU and Iowa game last night, and and I'm 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 actually glad I did. That that, that was great. And I'm watching Caitlin Clark, and the whole time I'm just thinking, I'm like, dang, why why couldn't James Harden play like this in an elimination game, man? <laughs> like, why couldn't he do this? But. Yeah, that's that's all that was running through my mind. Man. I know that <laughs> was. Uh... Wait a minute. So you went from watching Caitlin Clark to James yeah. Harden yeah. elimination. James, that's right. <clears throat> it would be nice if you could have played like Caitlin Clark. Boy, yeah, she lit it up last. She's she was a well. Angel Reese was having a monster game, and it just yeah. offensively just. Well, she the ankle problem. It, her, it, it, yeah. That that probably played some into. She did end up with twenty rebounds, but. Caitlin Clark was making shots from like yeah. crazy distance. If you missed it, she had forty-one points, uh, double-digit assists. She ended up with ten or eleven. She something like up, that. Yeah. Last night in the game, she ended up becoming the all-time three-point shooting leader, all-time. She's the all-time in tournament everything. stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Assist leader, like she's got so many. She's got so many records, and then so 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 now she's got to go through Connecticut. And then probably South Carolina. That gauntlet that she's going through, if if she does win it, holy crap! Well, she's responsible for so many of the points. And she, yeah, it's going to be tough though to get past uh, UConn. First of all, UConn first of all is going to be South really good. Now you got Paige Beck. I thought it was Buchers. It's Beckers. It's Beckers. It's Beckers yeah. Paige Beckers versus Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Clark is going to be. Uh, so how do you side, John? Because you you started. Oh, yeah. It's a win for the Whites. 
Whitey, um, Whitey got the dub. Yeah. So how do you how do you approach? I avoided Twitter Iowa. yesterday, so I didn't have to. It was actually interesting because uh, people were saying, "Look at a uh, look. What's her name? Kim Mulkey doing. Look what she's doing for race relations by putting the white girl. Oh in yeah, Caitlin I did oh, see yeah. that. Yeah. Van Lith. Um, yeah, yeah, that was Twitter. that was nice for her to take all the bullets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and more likely, she just didn't want to get Flage in foul trouble by having to guard Caitlin Clark for right. the entire game. Uh, yeah, that's, but see, that's nice. <laughs> Nice philosophy there, Kim. Well, uh, Kalen Clark scores on everyone. I, I I get it. You got your you got your star guard. You want to get in foul trouble. But John, where do you side with uh, uh, Kalen Clark? Still, so, so even over Beckers, even over Beckers. Yeah. Oh, she's oh Kalen a, Clark is the best thing that's happened in women's college basketball ever. Yeah, no, I, it's it's like watching yeah. Tiger. I mean, it just yeah, she transcends right now for me. Watches like I I really want to see. see we her don't play. even see color. It's just like Tiger. You started it. We but, don't even see. Yeah, you color. literally you said, said you good day for the whites. It's <laughs> a win for the whites. <laughs> it whitey. I said whitey no, got the win. That's not what you. Yeah, how actually about, he did. How about how about LSU fueled the fire before the game too. What do they do? They walked off the court for See, the I national. They always do that. They always do that. Yeah. But, I didn't... but but it's the first time that people have seen it. Yeah. And so everybody was outraged. And oh, the, and they course, do it every game. They're never on the court. They don't st stand on the court. Yeah, but they for the don't national show anthem. it on TV. Did they? I didn't see it on TV. No, it, it, people who were there reported it, but yeah. it's been a thing for them all year. Long. Yeah. Well, it didn't. I mean, for me, I didn't even know about it. But it was uh, between watching that, which is a really good game, and then the Astros, it was uh. It was good viewing, and and we are watching somebody who's special. Like Caitlin Clark is a really special player. It just I've never I've never seen a women's basketball player who plays the way she does on a consistent level. Um, I've spent some great ones, and of course, you know, I didn't watch spend a ton of time watching Candace Parker, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but all I know is watching Caitlin Clark last year when I first saw her. I'm like, holy crap, look at this range, and then. <laughs> She's fun to she's fun to watch. There's certain players who just, you know, LeBron transcends a lot of things. Tiger <laughs> transcended a lot of things. Watching Michael when he played, Shohei Tani, you don't want to miss, you know, what he does. And yeah, you can't miss and, Caleb. And and no. you, you don't miss Altuve's at, and out batting the playoffs for Altuve late in the game. You don't want to ever miss. Well, that. I don't want to miss uh, Jordan whenever he's up. Ever. Right, but Caitlin Clark is just is yeah. just different. I mean, and even for people who love LSU and Angel Reese. It is different when a post player is making layups versus somebody who's bombing in from. Th no. She hit one from thirty feet three inches yesterday, John. They were measuring it. Did you see that? Yeah. No. Oh, you wouldn't have seen it. They had a thirty feet. She had three threes. The first one was twenty six seven, then twenty eight one, then thirty, the, no twenty eight three, and then thirty feet one inch. Thirty feet one. Inch. You know how far behind the NBA <laughs> mark that is. Yeah. I mean, that just doesn't exist. It's it's such a rarity that. That's what makes her special to watch. It's really not. It's not the other stuff like the assumptions that everything is 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 racial or that it's just. I've never seen anybody play like it's her. This is a this is a crazy thing to watch. She's the Steph Curry. She's the Steph Curry of the sport. There's, I mean, his range is stupid, and she's got that kind of range. Granado gets all his his stats from ball sack. I didn't see the qualifier that that was for the last, yes, for the postseason. My apologies to everyone. Caitlin is a better shooter than that. And you know what? The guy in front of me needed Doc Linville. You were absolutely right, though. Um, because it, it's what stood out in the video. You know what? It's what stands out when people see your five head. When people see That's the rude. gigantic that is rude. divot out of the back of your head. It's what stands out. You know what? There's never been like a, a a superhero with a gigantic bald spot with male pattern balding. It just never has happened. You, can you want to be a superhero or not? Then you need Doc Linville. Listen, if you're too young to be, I'm too young and I'm old. I'm too young to have a gigantic bald spot. I'm too young to be losing my hair. I went to Doc Linville and Doc Linville did the job for me. He'll do the job for you. Be it the neo grafting, okay, which is a much bigger process, or the PRP. And Kelly's going to do an unbelievable job for you. You're looking for the best way to get hair. The most, and listen, it's affordable and it is the best process, period. 975hair.com. That's 975hair.com.
You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, let's go. What did you think, Renell Blanco, last night? Let's go. How about that? Oh, can we get off Joe Espada now? All right. Can we stop already with the Joe Espada hate? Won a game, people. Won the game. 10 nothing was your final. Um, and Joe Espada... Uh, he talks about, you know, Blanco was a guy. He didn't start pitching until he was 18 years old. He's 30 now. So there's, there's no hitter. It's his eighth start. Um, yes. Eighth, eighth start, start, and he gets a no hitter. Yeah. And he's only been in the league two years as a 30-year-old late bloomer. He was up and down, a yo-yo. He a car wash be- guy. I was listening to Steve Sparks was talking about. Yeah. He worked at, have you yeah. heard the story? Yeah. Worked in a car wash and just to help his mom yeah. pay bills. And the Astros said, hey. You know, I know the car wash thing's going pretty good, but uh, could we interest you in uh, maybe pitching for a major league team at some point? Yeah, how about that? That's actually not happening. It wasn't the Astros. Well, he and he yo-yoed up and down and was bad. He his first uh, outing, he got lit up and and just and he and he got sent back down. And he was just he's a guy that you know what he really pissed his ass off this spring and deserved a spot in the rotation and maybe ahead. Of JP France, but JP France came through for you a big time last year. Uh, so you didn't know whether or not Renel Blanco would be able to handle it, uh, starting, you know, being in the starting rotation. And I guess he did. Here's Joe Espada last night afterwards. This guy's been, his story, he's, you know, fantastic. Like he, the way we, how we sign him from the DR, it's a pretty remarkable story. And uh, his journey, he's in front of his family, he's, um, you know, his mom is here, and to do that in front of his, the people who love him and support him, uh, it, it, it makes it makes this even more special. What a week he has, he's had, and um, happy for him and his family. Yeah, did you see the hug on the field after? It was great. That's that's just uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, he had really had a change up working, right? I mean, Joe Spada talked about that too. I, he he he's not overpowering, but man, his ball pops. It really pops. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then you know his changeup was awesome. Had him all off balance all night long. Uh, you know who knows that he'll he'll I don't know we don't know how he's going to end up pitching, but for one night, boy, he had everything going on. Here's a spot of talking about his changeup. Middle of that game, how efficient he was, the swing he was getting. Um, I started seen signs of this could be a very special night. His change up, changing speed, it's a pretty good lineup over there. So he makes the fastball and the slider that much better. The way it comes out of the hand, it looks just like his fastball and hitters are committed to potentially swing at a fastball in and that ball just kind of falls in the zone and it's a pitch that he's worked really hard on. He paid big dividends uh, tonight. Serious question, and this is not a, this is not a hater comment. Dusty let Blanco finish? Yeah, because he wasn't... At the pitch count? He was in at the pitch count. The, the 100th pit... Now, they were going to go 90 with him last night. He, he did go over 100. He did. He did. The 100th pitch was the walk to uh, George, I think. And by then, you can't take then, it. Yeah, you can. You got one out to go. No, when he was in the eighth inning, I, 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 I was looking. After seven, I was I looked up. I was like, oh, man. Because it was, a, it was. I think he was exactly at 80 through seven. No, he was efficient because it was a blowout. Yes. Well, even still. If it was a, if it was a three-run game, I think Dusty goes and gets him. Well, and maybe a spot it up. If he know. was at, it, I think it was all about number of pitches. He he was at 80 through seven. You can't take him out. No, no, no. He's, he's well, but. We've seen it. We've seen guys get pulled by Dusty. We saw it with AJ well, wait a at seventy because he's not a guy that goes. Abreu's not available and Hater's not available. Who are you going for? You're going to go in a three-run game and take out a guy that's dominating for Presley? No, I I wouldn't. But yeah. but that's typically what happens though. Right. With well, Dusty and AJ, well, Dusty there's is- only two managers I can go off of. That's typically what they have done. Now the difference is because you've got a guy who. This isn't the total. He doesn't get to this many pitches. He's only got eight. The difference is now, this is not somebody you're probably going to have in the starting rotation, you don't think, based on everyone coming back. He's 30. He's not a, you know, a 24-year-old Hunter Brown. He's right. not, you know, you may be looking at him differently. I also think a spot is going to 
do some things. I think Espada might look at it differently where he's trying to maybe ingratiate the players towards him. Like, that's a player yeah. thing to let a guy keep going. Well, and now listen, again and again, if he was at 120 pitches, yeah. I mean, if he was going into well, the, into the eighth inning with 100 pitches, which happens a lot, but you, when, you know, you, you and, and it happened with the Astros, with Dusty, he's gone out and got guys because their pitch count was so high. And somebody said, I don't know, I don't know who it was that if he didn't get, um, if he didn't get Guerrero, that there was a possibility you were coming out to get him with two outs in the ninth, even at, and a ten in nothing a, nothing lead? ten nothing game. I mean, you gotta let Bro, the kid, but let you do finish. want you do want this though. You don't want to overthrow him, and you know, right? And for his arm to be that's not the way you want him to start the season. No, they but probably that's didn't not, want him throwing a hundred. That's not overthrowing though, honestly. Yeah. One game at over 100 is not overthrowing. No. You're early in the year. You haven't had wear and tear. There's He didn't pitch in a World Baseball Classic. Like We we got to quit acting like 100 pitches. Like, how is this guy still standing? He's got 102 <laughs> pitches. Like, it's not – historically, we know it's not really a killer. What makes it more is the, the consistent high pitch count, the pitching through the course of an entire year. It's It's the wear and tear. You know, he may not have the wear and tear, career wear and tear on his arm. Think about this. An American-born pitcher who's been in youth baseball, travel baseball, uh, um, has his own pitching coach, all that stuff that goes into it, multiple breaking pitches at an early age. I don't think that's probably Rennell Blanco's well, he, journey. Again, His journey is not pitching coach, travel baseball. Again, he didn't start pitching till 18. That's what I'm saying. The, the where, I think we can probably assume that since, since, the, since um, studies have shown the arm difficulties happen a lot from young pitchers not putting a baseball down for the entire, you know, for as long as they need to. Keep throwing, keep throwing, keep throwing pitches they shouldn't throw. They're playing travel bases, baseball. They're playing year-round baseball. That was not what Blanco did. So he doesn't have that wear and tear on his arm. Yep. Speaking of which, uh, Justin Verlander threw 52 pitches, for those of you who didn't hear. Uh, and how many? Uh, three innings? Three innings. Three innings, three innings and yep. 52 pitches in a simulated game. And felt really good. Looks like he's going to get a rehab assignment uh, coming up here shortly. So, but Justin Verlander on his way back. You got a win. How about that? You got Renel Blanco looking really, really good. What do you do with the rotation now? Is that, who's out of the rotation? Is it Fromber? Is Fromber out of the rotation now? If you go by the first game of each of the season for each pitcher, Fromber out. Beat it. You're out of the rotation now. I know you won an All Star wow, game, and we're and you know, oh whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, arbitration. Man, we are I made done with guys so fast. Well, <laughs> he did. He didn't look right. Okay. No, it was a game. I know it was one game. It was a game. I got a text from from somebody we both know. Is like yesterday. He was like, "Can you guys stop? Tell John the world's not ending." And then he texted. See, they threw a no hitter. Stop what do you mean? the complaining. I, mean, I was, I said, I'm not even worried about the 0 and 4 start. You were a little worried to start this what? show off. What? You were a little disappointed. It, they sucked this weekend. That's all I said. They sucked, and they did suck. And oh, but, and oh, by the way, all the games were competitive. All the games were competitive. But I'm the one that said that I still think they're going to have the best team ever. A what are you talking about? You're a you spot of singleton. You're a spot of singleton. Who, what a hole texted you that? Somebody who knows you pretty well. Really? really? Who thinks you're well, then, a real worry wart. Okay, stop already. I'm the one that said. I, I, well, you said it before. the. You didn't sound as sure yesterday. Yes. About no. your best Astros they, ever. Well, I will say this. I'm not all that sure about the middle of the bullpen. I will say that. Yeah, it'll get better. And will it? It's a lot of pitchers coming. Yeah. Will it? Well, I mean, it has we to get just better. We just talked about it. Garcia's it, coming well, back. JV's coming back. Yeah, it's going to yeah. get better. Either well, JP or, or Rennell are going to go. JP France or Rennell's going to be there. Well, that'll be an interesting decision by them. Uh, well, or, or they go to six-man rotation. Or they go to six-man. Yeah, but six-man is to save people's arms. Six-man is, but you know what? They've come. They've got coming up. Listen, it, oh, it there's usually no reason gets, to go six-man unless you're unless you got unless a, you're working JV. And, but JV is a creature of habit. He's going to want his days to be exactly the way it's supposed to be. You got a long stint of games without a day off. Oh, then that that would, that's when they go to six-man. Yeah, but will Verlander be back by then? 
Verlander um, will be back. They've got days off right now, but they've got coming up. They've got a nice long stint where they they probably will go. They've they're they're not afraid of six man rotation. They they said this before, at the end of April and beginning of May, they've got a nice long run. Well, whatever I can I can say that I do believe that Hunter that uh, rather Dana Brown is going to have more influence. He did not have influence over Dusty. I do think he'll have some. Espada buys into a lot of the stuff that the front office has, as well he should, with his first man, GM, uh, first GM uh, uh, job, I mean, uh, managerial job. But I do think that you're going to see Espada, like if, if, if there is a philosophical ideology from Dana Brown about how to handle a six-man rotation versus five, how to handle this, what we're doing on the base paths, uh, we saw Jeremy Pena take off and get a steal a couple games ago. Like, you know, he he had when well, the steal count was low last year. Jeremy took off, got got in at uh, second base. We may see them run more. We may see them handle some things differently on the base pass. Whatever Dana would like to do, I do think his spot is going to be more receptive to that. If that includes a six man rotation, so be it. Uh, we'll see. They go. If I'm reading this right, they go from May 6th to June 6th. That's impossible that they've got. Uh, they go that long with just one day off on May 23rd. That's a nice long. That's a long stretch. So that will be. That might be the time where they go to a six man rotation, and and I think they're not opposed to it, especially with JV coming back. And now JV is the guy that goes. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. I'm I'm pitching every fifth day, so you you can you can uh, mix up how the other guys are throwing. But I'm going every five days. We'll see if he's acceptable to going to a six man rotation. It's a nice problem to have with Renault Blanco throwing the way he did last night. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six is the number if you want to get in here on ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five. I want to talk about my man Kent Jones over at uh, Dream Rate. Dream Rate is where you get your mortgage on. Dream Rate is he's the He's the underdog. He is the little guy. He is the guy that's doing it, all of this work, with no overhead. So he's fighting for you. While these other big guys that at the mortgage game that put their names on bowl games, you know how much that costs? You know why they have all that money? Because they make all that money. Because they're making all that money on you and your mortgage. The way to go is through a mortgage broker. I never did. I'm dumb, okay? I wish I had had a mortgage broker. I had no idea. You just, when you're signing your mortgage, you just go, oh, here's this this one. Here's a fee. Here's a fee. Here's a fee. Kent Jones is working to get, eliminate those fees for you. Like, you're literally saving thousands of dollars. He saved people thousands of dollars at signing and throughout the course of the mortgage just because he worked on it. While the other guys, they just hear fee, hear fee, hear fee, and then they were able to put their names on bowl games. Kent Jones, it's never gonna, it's, you're never going to see the Kent Jones Bowl, the Dream Rate Bowl, ever. Because Kent is just working that d- deal for you and saving you as much money. He's been doing this forever. He's been in the business for over 25 years, and he is going to continue to do that, and he's going to do it for you. 713-520-5626, 713-520-5626. That's 713-526-LOAN. Or go to 975-LOANS.com.
so here's the deal. Um, you feel the humidity. You feel, I don't feel the humidity as much. I had Vanderford Air come out and install a whole home dehumidifier. I hate humidity. I mean, I've gotten to where I truly hate humidity and especially dew point. You guys know how I feel about the dew point. Well, I, I gave them a call at Vanderford Air and ended up getting uh, uh, 281557 COOL, C-O-O-L. And I ended up having them install that. And I had a new air conditioner installed three years ago, and I got gouged by the company who put it in. Vanderford Air, I called them, went through their entire checkpoint that they come through. They they cleaned out the line that I had. I hadn't cleaned out the line, my, my uh, emergency drain line for years ever since they installed the last one so much gunk came out of there and that's something that they do with their regular checkups that they do they went through the entire system found issues i had many of them were small they they got through them all but listen if you need a new air conditioner that is not a small issue and they can fix it for you they can fix your problems if they need to be fixed but if you need a new air conditioner what they'll do is they'll give you the fixed cost and they'll give you the new cost, and you can make a decision for yourself. They'll find the capacity you need with the size that makes sense, not one that's too big and not one that's too small, one that's just right, and it really helps your energy efficiency, and most of all, it just helps you to stay cool the way you should. It's Vanderford Air. This is a company you can trust. Put the number in your phone, 281-557-COOL. That's 281-557-COOL, or go to the website at VanderfordAir.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back. ESPN 97.5 and 92.5-3780-3776 to hang out with us here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Your mock draft comes out today. Yep. It's a new mock. It's aggressive. I almost thought about putting the Texans, having them get into the first round. You know what? I've decided who I want. I want Tavondre Sweat. I know he's 365. I know he kept his weight the same at least from his from the combine to the pro day. I'm worried that he's going to be 390, 400 pounds, and he could like Lewis Nix. Remember Lewis Nix was a nothing yeah. out of Notre Dame. Couldn't yeah. keep his weight down. And Vince Wilfork was, but man, yeah, but Vince was a well, yeah. Vince. Was really, but Vince was a big bone yeah. guy, but he. Who was the grave digger for the Packers? Uh, Gilbert, but yeah. Gilbert Brown is just sloppy. That's not those guys. You don't see those guys as much because there's so much nickel, right? Yeah. There's so much passing. Yeah. Those guys just don't play a whole lot. But my gosh, Devondre, if you're going to have three 287 pound defensive tackles, wouldn't it be nice to have just a total drain clogger in there? Just drain clogger seems a bit disrespectful. Drain clogger is one of the ultimate compliments you can play to a run stop. Drain pay to a run stop. That's where you get uh, hair. No, 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 no. Yeah. You that's not a an insult. Bit. You got a little out of body that's yourself. A, that's a huge that's compliment. You're a drain, drain clogger. clogger. You can't. Drain clogger. You can't sip. It's you can't. Gross stuff stuff run stuffer, nah. maybe. Uh. Now, who cares? says a run stuffer? Drain that's, clogger. Drain clogger means there ain't no, nothing's getting through this drain. Nothing. Nothing. Drano. Then you just get some Drano. No. Or you Nothing. call Billy Brown. Or Nothing. Snake. Billy, Billy, Brown Brown. Can't, Billy Brown can't get Tavondre Sweat up out of that hole. Billy Brown our guy. can't get Tavondre Sweat up out of there. John. What? He's disrespecting our guy. Yeah, that's Billy Brown. That's our guy. I talked about Billy yesterday on the show. You're disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and yeah. Aqueduct Plumbing. The best plumbing guy, worst golfer. Billy Brown. What a combo. Okay. I, I kind of want Sweat. Because that's really what's missing right now. Because I was looking at other stuff like, well, I there's mean, guys how many Jordan rounds Jefferson. did you do? Only one. Oh, I'm not a lunatic. Right. Okay. So you don't you don't have them moving. I up. thought I almost had them trade in after trading out. I almost thought, yeah, I almost had them trade well, into you know, the back half of the the first. But yeah, it's just I wouldn't not, put that past Nick. No, I wouldn't put it past them at yeah. all. It could it could be, and I do think that they could trade up in the second round. They have the 42nd pick. I could see them trading into the top five picks of the second round yeah. for sure. But I just, I realized, I looked at the draft capital would take. I had four first-round picks or first-round trades. Does that feel like a lot to you? Not really. It's not. Last no. year, there were six. The year before, there was nine. Yeah. And the year before that, there was three. People act like, this, this is crazy. It's not. I had Arizona trading back, Monty Osford, out of the number four spot. It's smart. Trading back. And then I had him trading back up to get a guy he wanted. He's got so much draft capital. At some point, 
you got the ammunition to go get players you love. I had Arizona with three picks in the first round. Yeah. Uh, they traded up and got their hands on uh, Brian Thomas. Um, they they traded. I had them trading with the Minnesota Vikings, and I had the Giants trading with the Patriots. So I had the Patriots trading back to six, and I had Ooh. and I had because I at first I had them trading with Minnesota and taking two first. That probably would be more likely. But once I got to the 11th pick and I had Minnesota take an attack, I'm like, I don't know. I got all the way to this Patriots second pick at 23, and I rearranged it. I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting the value that I wanted. If I'm not going to get a quarterback, I need to get more value. So what do you? Okay, so I flipped it, and so, I had them getting. I had them switching three and six. So what? So give me your quarterback order now. So this is how I predicted it in this. I said, okay. Caleb one, Jaden Daniels two. I said, Giants move to up. three. So when it when I when at first I had the Vikings moving up to three, I had JJ McCarthy because he feels just like a Kevin O'Connell guy, very Kirk Cousinsy. I mean, an athletic guy who can run an offense, makes reads. But then when I did the Giants there, I said, you know what? That's Drake May, because because the Giants, Brian Dayball had Josh Allen. So Brian Dayball seen kind of the the young stallion. He's seen a big body guy. Now I don't think he's Josh Allen, but I could see Brian Dayball saying, "You know what? We can harness this." If I'm the Giants, am I letting? This is Brian Dayball's. He's hanging on. Okay, so I'm not letting Brian Dayball make this decision. Well, he's your coach, so you're right. He doesn't get to make the decision. But if you if you are working in conjunction with him, yeah, I could see where he could he could say, "Look, if they had the fourth Pick, well, if they have the third pick, my, my guess is that maybe he would go with him over the young guy. I mean, they're both young guys, but at least he has more. Um, Drake May has more experience. So I basically just plugged in. So I've got a, four quarterbacks in a row. I had Giants making that trade, and then I have Minnesota, because I just don't think Minnesota made these trades to not come away at the quarterback. So I had Minnesota moving up to four, because I think Monty Austin Fort will make a trade back. And I think I think Elliot Wolf will consider it. Now, if Jaden Daniels is there at three, it wouldn't shock me if they I, – I, I just don't know how these guys have these quarterbacks ranked. I, I just don't know. You know, it wouldn't shock me if, if Drake May or McCarthy went two. I could see the Patriots sitting tight and drafting. What's the history Jayden on Daniels. four straight quarterbacks? Never. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's against the odds. But against the odds. But awesome. you got a lot of teams that need quarterback right now. Yeah. Oh, and, and they're in tra well, tradable neighborhoods. That's what I said is that this is a rare instance where yeah. you've got desperate teams yeah. like Denver. Denver's sitting at they they just don't have enough draft capital to do it. They don't have you have even have a second rounder. At usually a lot of times, even a team even if a team is really crappy, they they won't need a quarterback at the top. Yeah. The, the, the top three teams in this draft all need quarterbacks. Well, the Giants could the Giants could conceivably sit tight and just see what shakes out. Because there is an outside chance they could go quarterback, 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 wide receiver, wide receiver, quarterback to the Giants. Yeah. So where do we see you're, you're going to do some TV today or whatever, yeah. some podcast? Or, yeah, I'll do Mock Draft Live will be on TV on, tonight. Is this on NFL, NFL plus, plus, plus or something? NFL Network. On all all streaming platforms, oh, be. NFL Network. It's the TV, yeah. It's the TV it's show. It's the TV show. So you, they're putting you. Colleen Wolf, who got in trouble over the, we didn't get to that yesterday. Colleen Wolf, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share it on the other side. We'll get back to the Astros too. But Colleen Wolf got in some trouble by Woody Johnson. I was worried for Colleen. Like really? Oh yeah. You know the NFL owners own NFL Network. You know that. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll talk about it on the other side. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, by so the way, the oh, your out. Cardinals owner's gotten some trouble too. Okay. So the little guy, the Caitlin Clarks, it was a big day for little, the little guys. Caitlin, okay. They're the one seed. Yeah, but they're, but they're the underdogs. Right? Well, they were a two and a half point favorite. But they're still, it was, it was an uphill battle all the way that no one thought they could do it. Uh, they were the favorite. Okay. <laughs> No one thought they her could. over under was thirty one and a half points. <laughs> so and she way over. So yeah, way it was over. a big day for the little people, including a uh, former Cardinal executive who beat for the first time ever an NFL owner lost in a, a case. First time ever. Really? Yeah. Uh, right now though, well, let's talk about uh, Houston Safe and Lock. There's Derek DeSola. How about this? Okay, the men's tournament. The final game is Monday night. Can you pick the winner? 
Do you think you know who's going to win? Okay. Well, here's the deal. You go to Houston Safe and Lock, buy you a before the games on Saturday, up until Friday night, before the games on Saturday, okay, you buy a new safe from Houston Safe and Lock. You pick the winner of that game on Monday night between the, all the men, the men's national championship. You pick that winner, and you get 50% off on that safe that you bought before. Okay? How about that? This is a great time. If you need a safe, people, okay, you got a business, you need a safe. You got a gun, you don't have your safe. You want a safe. Okay, what about being able to pick the winner and getting 50% off on that? If it's your business and you need a safe, that's an expense. Put that money back in your pocket. Put it back to your bottom line when you buy the safe from Houston Safe and Lock and pick the winner for the NC, for the men's basketball championship on Monday night, April 8th. What I need you to do is go to 975safe.com, 975safe.com, or get to one of the two locations, West Hummer and Beltway, or uh, Wirt and I-10. That's King Safe and Lock, same company. 975safe.com. Pick the winner and get 50% off.
All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. The number to give us a call here. If you want to get in and talk about this, let's go. Let's go. Need you to get in here and uh, hang out with us here on the show. Did you two, uh, so that- did, did you two participate? I'm going <laughs> to pretend like I'm a caller because I got motivated by mm-hmm. you asking us to call in. Did you participate in the oh, – Watching what y- watching Yonder Diaz call that no hitter makes me so angry at Dusty. You know, that, you know how there many was some of that, that went on yesterday. Last yeah. night about everyone furious about thinking back to Yonder not getting the bats and calling games. I'm angry. R- <laughs> relax, everybody. Um, we get it. You're performative. Relax. You're not that angry. You're yeah. Listen. What, thank you, Dusty. For what you thank exactly. you just thank Dusty for your service for his and, service and move about your day. Thank yeah. you. If Yiner wouldn't be in a position to call that no hitter in the way he did, if Dusty didn't train him last yeah, year, yeah. But there's also probably not two walks if uh, Machete calls the game. A perfect game is what probably we're talking about. Game. If Machete was behind the plate, uh-huh. let's just mm-hmm. be honest about that. Listen, if Machete uh, calls that game. It's a perfect game. I, I listen. I don't care. I don't. I don't care what he last year. It's over. Let's let's move on. Dusty got himself a World Series here, okay? So, I mean, that's it, it was great. No, we must be furious at him. No, we remain be... furious for his decisions from last year. No, I'm now. I gotta be. I gotta be furious with Joe Espada for putting in uh, Jonathan Singleton. Okay, now, okay, I gotta. My anger has got to be directed at the current guy. Otherwise, and, and I'm not complete. I can't be completely satisfied with what's going on. Okay, it's ridiculous. Let Dusty go. Do Let they, that man go. Do the Astros have a major league first baseman on the roster? Seriously, the Dusty Did you see stuff, the play, the, the diving play that saved the no-hitter? I did see that. But yeah. the Dusty stuff probably— Kind of laid there a little long, I thought. <laughs> get up. Hey, get up The already. Dusty stuff probably does need to stop, though. It like, does. I, I, I ask a question because I was it was a legitimate question about how would Dusty have let him stretch out and get into the ninth. And, you know, I was just curious how this would— But Dusty had great success for the Astros. Dusty— Dusty's gone. It's Espada's now. Espada's one and four. Um, he's got to shape up, but it's not. I mean, it's it's a it was a series. It was a it, the bullpen. They had leads in three of the four games against the Yankees, and the bullpen did not step up and do their job. Probably should have gone two and two in that series. They didn't, and so we're here now with a no hitter, and that's the story. So, if you guys are watching a no hitter, watch the Astros. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that or whatever whatever you want to get in here. If you Look, I still have some concerns about whether or not about Verlander's age. I mean, there's some basic, there's some basic baseball concerns I have. And you always wait for, you know, we waited a long time for the San Antonio Spurs to fall off, for the uh, for the um, New England Patriots to fall off. And just when you thought they were going to, they didn't, because they had they had certain players, older players, who continued to extend extend the run. And you know, Jordan Bregman, uh, uh, Tucker, and and, uh, you know, obviously Altuve, they're still on this team. And now you've added Yiner Diaz as a full-time player, and he's off to a phenomenal start. If Jeremy Pena starts to hit the way that he, we know he can hit from the year before, that's not, that's not crazy that somebody has a sophomore slump. This is actually stuff that happens in sports if you follow it, especially in baseball. And I think he got into his own head with his swing and his swing plane. They talked about it last year. This year, he had his first home run yesterday since July 5th. I mean, that's a big deal. First home run to me, yeah, that almost felt like this. Almost, I mean, Renel Blanco is the story of the game. And Yonder Diaz, two home runs. And Kyle Tucker, two home runs. But Jeremy Pena hitting a home run and hitting the ball well this year, all I know is that I expect the other stuff to happen. Jeremy Pena is the real wild So I had heard behind the scenes – that about midway through last, or, or when he was in his slump after his July home run and didn't hit another one for a month, that they wanted to work with him with his swing and adjust his swing in season. And he was like, no, I can't do it right now. I can't. I got to do it in the offseason. I got to do it in the offseason. And uh, apparently he did, and he worked with the guys. I was just joking, and it's all Reggie Jackson. It was the, the hitting coach, and the, they did a really Cintron, and they did a really nice job with him. But he didn't want to change in, in midseason or in September. He did not want to make major adjustments. Now maybe he's made those adjustments and he's putting the ball 
he, he's hitting the ball with a little bit of lift that he wasn't getting at all last year. Here he is. He's got to be. Did you see afterwards? And he looked up at the heavens and said, "Thank you, finally. Yeah, thank you for that home run." Here he is talking about his first home run in forever. You know, I've just been trying to keep putting together good at bats. You know, we put a lot of work in this off season, a lot of work in the spring training. And I'm just glad we got that one out the way. Just glad. I mean, it's got to be a relief. He knew. He knew where he was as far as that goes. He knew. He knew he wasn't hitting with the pop that he needed to hit with. And he, that he's better than he's better than what he had been. But yeah, you're right. If there's a sophomore slump. He still he's got to stay away. If he can lay off that slider away, <clears throat> holy crap, he's gonna have a big year. Mm-hmm. If he or can, take the slider away and spoil it to right field. Right, go with base it. knocks. Right, but th- now, I mean, there was a there, there's a time that you're thinking they never have to throw him a strike. If he keeps on swinging at that crap yeah. that he's swinging at, yeah. why throw him a strike ever? Uh-huh. And I think the dude found out last night, don't throw him a strike. Andy wants to get in here and talk about his Houston Astros. Hey, Andy. Hey, uh, I think that's huge what you're talking about, Pena. I was worried about him, you know, think they were tinkering with his swing, but it looks like uh, he's on point, and that could be huge all year long. But let me ask you guys, do you guys have any issue with um, Espada – Allowing uh, Blanco to throw 105, and then taking out Javier and uh, Brown at 90, and not letting them extend as well. Well, he had no. a no hitter. He had no hitter. That's different. Yeah, Andy. That's and granted, there was. I mean, it's it, not it, like they had given up a bunch of hits, but that was what I mean, inning? A, what inning was Javier in with 95th? Yeah. I mean. He was still at 80 through 7. Yeah. So he was so deals. efficient. So, I mean, it's a historical opportunity. Yeah. With Christian Javier, and let's also face it, too. The Astros are com- they're counting much more on Christian Javier at the end of the year, uh, potentially, than Renel Blanco, at least as a starter. So uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a no hitter. It's a historical yeah. no hitter, and his pitch count was really good. That's never been something we've said with Christian Javier. What a great pitch count for Javier. That almost doesn't exist. He couldn't even get to a no-hitter in the World Series because his pitch count got too high. He had to, he had to get help with the no-hitter there that he was part of. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's the I think that's the big difference. I don't have a problem with it. Jackie says, I'll be pissed at Dusty as long as I want. Sorry. He was horrible last year, and those decisions probably cost the team but he's not, a World Series appearance. AJ not, still catches it for his decisions. Dusty didn't catch – not winning at home, mate. And it, <laughs> what, what are we talking about? They were one win away from the World Series. They, they could not win a home game and against the Rangers. And they got their ass kicked they, in the they last were the game. second Chris, seed. Christian Javier couldn't get out of his own way in the last game. Like, look, what? I didn't think Dusty had his best year last year. But with that said, you're right. They couldn't win at home at all. Yeah. They couldn't get – you couldn't get hits. Kyle Tuck, Dusty had nothing to do with Kyle Tucker. Nothing. When your best offensive talent through the whole year, you know, that was your guy who's the highest MVP votes, can't get a hit. You dread seeing Kyle Tucker up to the come up to the plate at home late in the game. That's where we were, like, oh Tucker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, honestly. And now what if would they have won more games during the regular season? What's the difference? They won the division and they were the second seed. How did that they make have any field, they had home field advantage? And they had home field advantage in the in the in the uh, they would have been any different whatsoever. Get off Dusty's jock. Yeah. Get off of no, his No, he's not on his jock, he's on his ass. Yeah. Come on, Jackie. Jackie. Look at what Dell's doing. No, see? Dell's going to the Oh, it's racism. No, he is white. He's but whiter Jackie's than white. just Astros Twitter. He's not really. That's not a nice thing to say. Jackie is our friend. Is he? He. We know him. We're aware of him. Sure. Sure. Have you hung I mean, out with Jackie? Yes. Yes. He's Bolivar. So time. whatever. You're not like Raheel Jackie type friends. They yeah. hang out. I've had drinks with Jackie and his wife before. Yeah, I don't want to go down. I have to go down there and see him. And oh, that's what friends do, John Bolivar. No, whatever. but he has been a. He Bolivar. has been pretty consistent whatever. with his. Disappointment in some of the dusty moves. No, he, no, it was frustrating. It was, it was the Yiner it stuff was, was a big frustrating deal. Frustrating last year. Yeah, but, but it's oh, but it's Yiner's in. We're here. Here we are. Yiner's here, so we're good. Yeah, well, we should thank Dusty for his service, and you too, Jackie. Yeah, Yiner wouldn't be the player he is today if not for Dusty holding him back. Who like, knows? what did Dean Smith do to Michael Jordan? And look what Michael Jordan helped became. him be yeah. a better person, greatest ever. 
Yeah, Dean Smith was the we know the old adage: the only one who could hold Jordan down was Dean Smith. Yiner, the only one who could hold Yiner down. Dusty. And then what did Dean? What did Jordan become? And look at Yiner. Yeah, thank he's you. a Michael Jordan thank of baseball. You. Just, thank Dusty. Thank Dean Smith for yeah for creating goats. John heard behind the scenes as the boys talking in the D.C. That's not <laughs> no. That's actually I heard it from someone in the organization. DC. Okay, DC. the D.C. Prop bet: Caitlin Clark total. Tournament points versus Alex Bregman batting average at the end of April. Ooh. CC is at 129, Bregman 158. She's got two. Oh, wait a minute now. This just got to be an interesting prop. What number? How many does she have? 129. 129 in the in the uh, in the in the tournament. Well, the, no, no, there's no way. We're assuming Alex Bregman. Who said that? Tony. 129. Tony. So of 70. Course. She needs to score 71 to get to 200. You think she can score 71 if she makes a final? Yes. Yeah, yeah but making a final, but you, she's got to beat UConn. You, well, so, even still. They beat LSU. She, wait a minute. Alex Bregman's batting average could go down. Yeah, it's not like it's going <laughs> to. Yeah, but one base hit brings him way up more than one non-hit. Yeah, that's true. Like so, he goes. Uh, all it's it a small is, sample so size. She yeah. gets to but t- it's at the end of April. This is not a real thing. If she scores 37 in both games, that's 74 plus 129. So she'll be over 200. Is Alex Bregman going to hit over 200 in April? It, he could. He, it just yeah, a, he could. A two-hit sure. game puts him way ask, over. I'm asking you, not yeah. if he could. Will he? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. He looks like crap at the plate, boy. Three strikeouts last night. He looked bad. He looked bad. Remember? This is the year I heard that he was going to be really good. He is going to be great. MVP. He's going to be a top that's five what I heard. MVP guy. Uh, that, that's what I top heard. Top five MVP guy. That's right. I said it. Oh, the other the other thing about last night, beyond as you said, Whitey getting a win, Tony got a win too. Tony's a big. He's an Iowa, Iowa guy. He's a legitimate from Iowa person. Yeah, he's you, not a. You hey, look at me. I'm a brand new Caitlin Clark fan. He's not an outkick Caitlin Clark fan. <laughs> he's a. I live in I, Iowa yeah. and had loose meat sandwiches. That really Iowa. needs to be a thing. An outkick. Well, how how is outkick going to respond to Caitlin against Paige? Uh, well, it doesn't gonna, matter. That's the they're way. They're torn. Who are they going to root for? They're not torn. They're like, doesn't matter. We win. We, oh, the sweaty <laughs> one. Uh, when we they, win. When they see South Carolina on the other side. Van Lith and Angel beat it. They didn't like Van Lith? No, Until, Van Lith is the one that said it was racism. I know. That the, yeah, the LA article was racism. She spoke out. I think it's a real shame that it, look, it's too, I get that last year it deserves some, you know, I, I didn't love the way Angel handed it after the game and all that stuff. We already did all that yeah. stuff. The fact that People were the fact that you have the black hat, white hat mentality, the fact that you have the villain. And she said, I'll embrace the role of villain at LSU. Yeah. The fact that it had to be like that for women's basketball. This is phenomenal for women's basketball. It's a, it's the absolute. fact that there's this many eyes. I really can't wait to see what the TV numbers were because, I mean, I watched. I was very excited yeah, to watch it that, and it would live up to the hype. Absolutely. And a night where there was really nothing going on other than Ren- Renault Blanco. Other than a no hitter. Yeah. Right. Another, another one for the Astros. Just another. Another 17. Astros no hitter. Time to talk about Chastain Ford. Just another day where they're saving you money. Just another day of 0% on the Bronco Sports. Just another day, 1.9% financing on 23 trucks. Just another day of up to $12,000 off. Just another day at Chastain Ford where they're not adding on. Or marking up. They just ain't doing it. It just doesn't happen. There's, if there's a 23 on the lot, man, they're going to do whatever it takes to get it off. So, And they're brand new cars. They're brand new trucks. You need it right now. You need to take advantage of all the great people at Chastain Ford. And I ain't say take advantage of them, but it is what you do. Take advantage of the great of their great attitude, their great philosophy of giving you the best deal you could possibly get with the best service you could possibly get in. And the Ford F one fifty is is the it's the it's a preeminent vehicle. So you're looking for the best way to get into that Ford car truck, new or pre owned vehicle. They got those on the lot as well. You need to get chestingford.com on six ten at, at Homestead, not Hempstead. It's only five minutes from downtown, and it's the place.